Good afternoon, this is Daryl Peterson with MicroMeasurements, and I'd like to take a few minutes and uh, talk about a method you could use to correct for lead wire resistance in a strain gauge measurement. Uh, there's a couple of different approaches you can take. Uh, one is through the use of shunt calibration. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna take a few minutes and show you how you could uh, calculate the influence of the lead wires and how you would apply that correction. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna calculate what we call the effective gauge factor. Uh, if you remember, gauge factor is a measure of the sensitivity of the strain gauge. Uh, it's a unitless quantity. Uh, just about any strain indicator or signal conditioning amplifier, uh, you're gonna use the gauge factor in the setup of that piece of equipment. And that gauge factor will come on the package uh, supplied by us uh, of your strain gauges. Uh, typically for Constantan, the gauge factor is going to run uh, somewhere between 2 and about 2.1. Uh, Karma alloy gauges, it's typically around uh, 2. Uh, most of the time, maybe a little bit above 2. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to calculate a new gauge factor, and that new gauge factor is going to take into account for how much lead wire resistance you've got in your measurement. So let's start with an example of a three-wire quarter bridge. Uh, and then maybe we'll, we'll pick some values to, to kind of give us a, a good reference uh, for a real typical uh, type of strain gauge application. And then we'll go through that calculation. It's actually pretty simple and straightforward. But first, I'm going to draw a Wheatstone bridge. With a single strain gauge. <clears throat> There's my strain gauge. And I'm going to draw the Wheatstone bridge. These are the bridge completion resistors. And then this is going to be a three wire quarter bridge type circuit. So I've got the excitation that comes in. We typically label that as P plus, P minus. And then we've got the signal coming out. We're going to call this one S plus, And then this one S minus. And then with a three-wire quarter bridge, we have another connection that ties down to complete the circuit. Okay, so we have a three-wire quarter bridge uh, circuit that's sketched here. And when you have a three-wire quarter bridge circuit, the only conductor that you're really concerned about is the one that's in series with the strain gauge in that arm of the bridge. And for us, that happens to be this one. I'm going to call it R sub L. R sub L is the one that we're worried about because these other two wires, this one connects down to a signal input into an amplifier or a strain indicator that typically has a high input impedance. So a little bit of resistance in this wire is negligible compared to that input impedance. And this wire that connects down to the rest of the bridge is actually in this arm of the circuit, which is not desensitizing our strain gauge. Effectively, it would be de desensitizing this resistor, or if this were a strain gauge, it'd be that one. But we're not concerned about it. We're only concerned about this one. So knowing that, let's take some values and let's make some assumptions and look at an example. So I'm gonna, <clears throat> I'm gonna assume a couple of things. First off, I'm gonna assume that the strain gauge is 120 ohms. Uh, we typically offer strain gauges that are 120, 350, 1,000 ohms, and uh, in some cases even much higher than that, depending on the application. But for now, we're going to assume it's 120 ohms, and we're going to assume that this wire is about 20 feet of a 26 gauge wire. And that's pretty typical for the lead wire connections that we use on strain gauges. Uh, the other assumption I'm going to make is that the uh, gauge factor for the strain gauge is going to be equal to 2. Uh, typically, constant 10 gauges are going to have a gauge factor close to 2. Karma is going to be pretty close to 2 as well. And if we assume it's 2.0, then that makes the math a little bit uh, easier for us. So I'm going to call that K, and I'm going to assume that's equal to 2.0. 
Now, the goal of this, of course, is to calculate the influence of this wire and to correct for it. In order for us to do that, we're going to use the gauge factor equation that will account for the desensitization we get from that wire. And that equation looks like this. It's K prime, which is the gauge factor we're going to calculate, equal to the package gauge factor that we've assumed is 2, multiplied times the ratio of the resistance of the gauge, we're going to call that R sub G, divided by the resistance of the gauge plus the resistance of the lead wire. So the resistance of the gauge is 120. The resistance of the lead wire, we're going to calculate it. The gauge factor, we're going to assume is 2. And then if, in the end, we're going to uh, calculate what we would refer to as an effective gauge factor that has included this lead wire resistance. So if we do a little bit of the math here, the resistance of the lead wire, remember we said it's, uh, it's 20 feet. And if we assume it's a 26 gauge wire, it has a resistance per foot of about 0 0.042 ohms per foot. So I've got 20 feet times the 0 0.042 that resistance is equal to 0.84 ohms. Now we take this, plug this into our equation. We've got K prime is equal to 2.0 multiplied by 120 over 120 plus 0.84. This ratio works out to be 0.993. Multiply that times two. We're left with a gauge factor equal to 1.986. So what do you do with that? This K prime is equal to 1.986. And what we do with it is we input that new gauge factor into a strain indicator, uh, into our uh, data acquisition systems if they're not already correcting for lead wire resistance, or we would input it into the calculations we'd use for a signal conditioning amplifier in order to calculate what the simulated strain is when we use shot calibration. So if you're going to use this equation in order to calculate an effective gauge factor to compensate for that wire resistance, you got to make sure you're not doing a double correction. So this would be if your system, maybe it doesn't support shunt calibration, or maybe you've got to do these calculations by hand for whatever reason, uh, this is the way you would do that based on a three wire quarter bridge circuit. Now, if you'd like to find out more about strain gauges or Wheatstone bridge circuits, uh, please feel free to take a look at our website at www.micro-measurements.com, or you can pick up the phone and call Applications Engineering and we'd be happy to answer any questions related to strain gauges or Wheatstone bridges. And that number is 919-365-3800 and follow the prompts till you get to Applications Engineering. Thank you.